Hey, welcome to iLecture Online. And our next thermodynamic process we're going to talk about is the what we call the constant temperature process, also known as isothermic. So thermic means heat, iso means the same. So the same heat, heat doesn't change, temperature doesn't change on the gas. So to get a feel for that on a PV diagram, the red lines here represent isotherms. And so let me write that down. That's a good term to know, isotherms. So these are lines that represent the same temperature in the gas. And notice that if the gas starts over here as initial state and then ends up over there as the final state, and as it changes, follows one of those isotherms, that means it becomes an isothermic process. Now, what are the ramifications, or maybe not ramifications, what, are, what is the peculiarity of such a process? Well, let's take a look here. Remember what the definition is of delta U. Delta U, is equal to, to NC delta T. So the, the internal energy of the gas can only change if the temperature changes. So if the temperature does not change, then the internal energy of the, of the gas cannot change, which means in an isothermic process, delta U must equal zero. All right, that means that in a the first law of thermodynamics in an isothermic process changes to the following. Zero equals Q minus W. And of course, then when I uh, move the W over, you can say that Q equals W or W equals Q. The amount of work done by such a gas is equal to the heat added to the gas, which is kind of interesting. That says that the work done by the gas is exactly equal to all the heat that was added to the gas, or all the heat added to the gas is simply used to do work, and none of it is used to increase the internal energy of the gas, which remains constant. So the, the internal energy does not change. All right, that said, how do we then figure out what the work done is by such a process? All right, remember what we said if we had a isobaric process, one where the pressure didn't change. We said that the work done is equal to the pressure times the change in the volume, dV. I did, didn't write it like dV, I actually wrote it as delta V, the change in the volume times the pressure. Now, also remember that in any thermodynamic process, the work done is equal to the area underneath the curve, so again, that is true over here. We're looking for the area underneath the curve, but here, of course, we're not talking about a simple geometric figure. We talk, some, we talk about something that has kind of like a logarithmic curve, so it's a little bit more difficult. Since the pressure changes constantly when we go from the initial state to the final state, we cannot use this equation in this case. What we have to do instead is imagine that we take a very small change going from that point to this point through what we call an infinitesimally small portion of that process. And so the amount of work that we do in that small process, we can call that a small dW, a small amount of work, and that is going to be equal to the pressure at that location. And if we take a small enough section of that, the pressure will not change appreciably over that small little distance times the change in the volume. And we have to write it as a dV because we have to take an infinitesimally small volume change. All right, now, how do we solve for work? Well, then simply work is equal to the integral of dW, which is equal to the integral of P times dV. The only problem here is that P is not constant. So therefore, we have to go over here to this equation and solve P in terms of V. So here we can say that P is equal to nRT divided by V and plug that into our integral right there. We can plug that right into the P, and so this is equal to the integral of nRT over V times dV. Now notice in this case, n of course is the number of moles of that gas sample, which is constant. R is a constant, and also T is a constant. With an isothermic process, the temperature doesn't change, so all three items here in the numerator can come out of the integral sign. So this is equal to the integral, oh, let me write it down like this, it's equal to n RT times the integral of dV over V, and of course, when we integrate that, we go from the initial volume to the final volume. All right, so what is the integral of dV over V? Well, if you remember your calculus, that is equal to the natural log of V. 
So this can then be written as nRT times the natural log of V evaluated from V initial to V final. And so this becomes nRT times the natural log of V final minus the natural log of V initial because the definition of that is we plug in the upper limit and subtract when we plug in the lower limit. And then of course if you remember your rules of logarithms, that is equal to the natural log of the ratio of V final over V initial. And that's how we find the work done in an isothermic process. So you can calculate it like this if you know what the temperature is of the particular process, so you have to know the temperature, and if you know the final volume and the initial volume. But sometimes you may not know that, so is there another way in which you can calculate that? Let's go back to this equation right here, and we can see that PV equals nRT, and in an isothermic process, since T is a constant, it doesn't change, that means an nRT is a constant. What this is telling us is that the product of P times V is always a constant. No matter where you are along this isothermic process, the product of P times V at any point is always equal to the same number nRT. That implies that P1V1 is equal to P2V2, which is equal to nRT. So if you do not know what the temperature is of this process, you can actually solve for the work done by replacing nRT by either the initial pressure and volume or the final pressure and volume or the pressure and volume anywhere along that path. But typically speaking, you would either know the initial pressure and volume or the final pressure and volume. So what you can also say is that the work done by an isothermic process, instead of writing nRT, we can write is equal to P1V1 times the natural log of V, and of course here I'm writing 1 and 2, but maybe what I should do is initial and final, makes it a little bit clearer. So P initial, V initial times the natural log of V final over V initial. Or you can say that work done is equal to P final V final times the natural log of V final over V initial. So you don't have to memorize those per se, you just have to realize that once you have it in this form, you can simply replace NRT by P1, V1, or P2, V2, or initial and final, and you have two other forms of the same equation to find the work done in an isothermic process. So this is kind of unique, and there's the equation that you will need to find the work done in an isothermic process, and also remembering, of course, that the internal energy of the gas does not change, and that the, once you know what the work done is, you can then say, well, that's also equal to the heat added to the gas, because where does the gas get the energy to do the work? Simply by the heat that was added to the gas. And all of it, in this case, in an isothermic process, is used to do work.